I just want to quickly, since we're familiar with them, just uh, want to give these brothers a round of applause and thank them for coming out and thank you also for coming out. Keep doing what you like. Uh, shalom. Uh, thank you once again. Uh, we're just going to go right into it. Um, the last time we was here, um, we really tried to find out, you know, what the masses of people was really into. Okay, when we find out among uh, so-called black people, our people, Puerto Ricans, West Indians, and so forth, is that they either in Islam, Christianity, or Africanism, okay? So what we wanted to first go into uh, is to show you that this Bible, first of all, we said at the last lecture that uh, this Bible, first of all, was written by black people, Hebrew Israelites. And what you have to understand is that in the beginning, in the ancient world, all nations were dark-skinned people, including the so-called uh, white people uh, today. When, you, when the white man or the white woman uh, traces back their uh, lineage, they find out that uh, they were once black, uh, black people also. King James, all right, there's been a, a misconception and a lie going around that King James was a white man. King James, King James was actually a black man. And the Bible that we use is uh, known as the uh, King James uh, Bible of 1611, written in the year 1611, okay? Um, and then and throughout the Bible, it gives you the color of the people of the Bible. First scripture I'd like to get is, uh, I want to go into some color first, because a lot of our people, the masses of our people that went to church, gone to church, whether it be Baptist, Methodist, Jehovah's Witness, Roman Catholic, Protestant, Lutheran, you all been taught it's pretty much the same thing. I've been taught, I've been taught that too when I was a child. I've been taught that uh, Christ was a so-called white man. Disregard the horns and the 666 on top of his head. But all of you, at one time or another, if you went to church, you've been taught that uh, Christ was a so-called European man. We found out through research that this is a, this a particular individual name is Caesar Bogier, the Bogier family of Europe. He was living in Spain. His father was one of the popes of Rome in the 1400s, okay? And here's a book here written by uh, Sarah Bradford. I think it's uh, Macmillan, Macmillan Book uh, Publishing Company. And the book is called Caesar Bogier. And on the front cover is the exact image of this uh, character, Caesar Bogier, who, who posed for the picture of Christ. And they put this picture all throughout the planet Earth. At one time, the Japanese bowed down to this image. At one time, the Africans, even today, the Africans, they fight in the African struggle to get the white men out of their country. But on Sundays, they take a break and they go to church and they bow down to this image. So what I, what I would like to do is get this image out of your mind and show you that the Bible is a black man's book. That's why a lot of blacks are turning away from the Bible because they think it's a white man's book. Okay, I'd like you to go to Jeremiah 14.2. Now you, you walked around and seen so-called Europeans, white people, so you can understand, going around saying that they're Jews. You had a commercial where they said, uh, come to Israel, come stay with friends. It was a white man talking to other white people. But when you go into the historical document, the main historical document, which is the Bible, you'll find out that the Jews were people of color, black people. And what you're going to find out tonight is that you so-called black people in America, the so-called Negroes or African Americans, whatever you want to call yourself, you are the descendants of the tribe of Judah, of the nation of Israel. What you got to understand also is that the Jews or Judah is a tribe of people of a particular nation, and that nation is the nation of Israel. Like for example, you have the uh, Dominicans. They're from the tribe of Simeon, of the nation of Israel. Israel. They're your brothers and sisters. You have the tribe of Ephraim. Ephraim is the so-called Puerto Ricans. They're also your brothers and sisters. You, you also have the West Indians, which look similar to the so-called Negroes or Blacks of America. They're a completely different tribe, but of the same nation. 
Okay? So let's read that scripture, Jeremiah 14 and 2. Jeremiah 14 and 2. Judah mourning, and the gates thereof language. It says that the Jews are in mourning. Who in this country or around the world is in mourning? The so-called Negroes. Okay? I'm talking about this country here. You're the last, you ever hear the saying, the last fire, the last hire, and the first fire? Well, that fits you. You can get a Chinese that come all the way from China, all right, and he'll open up a, a, a fruit stand, and then two months later, he'll open up another fruit stand down the block. And then maybe a year later, he'll have another fruit stand and have his whole family in New York with fruit stands making money, living out in Scarsdale. And you so-called black people, you just have jobs. That's as far as you're going to go. Because that's how the man set up this system, all right? Go ahead. They are black. It's saying that the Jews are black. So who are these so-called Europeans going around saying that they're Jews? Who are these white people going around saying that they're Jews? It tells you in the Bible, in the Jews' document, that they are black. Read that again, brother. Judah Moyer and the gates thereof of language. They are black unto the ground. They are black unto the ground. Now this Bible that we're reading out is the same Bible that Jimmy Swaggett reads out of, the same Bible that the Pope reads out of, the same Bible that uh, Clinton was sworn in on, the same Bible that Bush was sworn in on, and so forth and so on. But they never, every time you watch a uh, tele-evangelist on TV quote the Bible, they never go to the scripture. Because they don't want you to know that the Jews are black. That the people of this Bible are black. Read it again. Judah mourning. The, the Jews are in mourning. Go ahead. And the gates, they are language. Go ahead. They are black unto the ground. Right, it says that they are black unto the ground. Now, we found this uh, picture somewhere in the city. It says, light up your light up your life. It should say, burn up your life. Okay? It says the it says the real Jews are black, but you got two so-called Europeans. Yeah. I'm going to show you who these people are today. Give me the book of Revelations, the second chapter and the ninth verse. These are imposters, all right? During the time of 70 AD, a lot of you so-called blacks, our people, we go around saying that we're African-American because we came out of Africa. That's true. We did come out of Africa, but we were sold to the white man by the Africans. The Africans is a totally different nation than us. Okay, let's read that. Let's, let's deal with this on the Jews though. Go ahead. Revelations 2 and 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. Right, he said he knows how hard we work. He knows the slavery, the most I know the slavery that we went, went through in America. He knows the poverty that we're living in. Go ahead. But thou art rich. He's saying we're rich through what? We're going to receive the kingdom of heaven. Go ahead. And I know the blasphemy. The blasphemy, the lie, the deceit, the wickedness. Go ahead. Of them. Of them. Go ahead. Which say they are Jews. There's a group of people walking around in America saying that they're Jews. These so-called Europeans, these white people going around saying that they're Jews. Putting up billboards all through the city. Talking about celebrate Hanukkah. Those are your high holy days. Talking about celebrating uh, Passover. Those are your high holy days. Go ahead. And are not. They go around saying that they're Jews, but they're not Jews. The Bible says, and are not. Those that say they are Jews and are not Jews. Go ahead. But out of the synagogue. But out of the synagogue. Go ahead. Of Satan. Of Satan. Satan is another word for the devil. All right. The synagogue of Satan. The chief house of Satan. Because, because among the so-called white people, you have different tribes among the white people. The so-called Europeans that call themselves Jews are from the tribe of Amalek. The tribe of Timon is the so-called Germans, because they were known for their uh, uh, technology, their science, and wisdom. Okay, Because who uh, developed the uh, bombs and missiles and rockets? German scientists. Okay. So the Most High knew exactly what he was doing when he set up this fight. Now let's go into some more color. Okay, okay, Isaiah. Okay, bring it up. Isaiah 29 and 22. Right, that's good. First okay. of all, would you call these people dark or would you call them pale face? Pale face, okay? 
Now, there's a scripture in the Bible, in the book of Isaiah, that says that the Jews or the sons of Jacob or the Israelites will not wax pale. Go ahead. Isaiah 29 and 22. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Jacob. Jacob shall not now be ashamed, neither shall his face now wax pale. But these are pale faces. You got a group of them living on uh, Eastern Parkway, got synagogues all over the place. Talk, talking about they're the Jews, and they're not the Jews. They're not the Jews, okay? Sister in the back has a question. Yes, they are. Okay, that's that's a very good question, sister. Let me explain that uh, briefly. Go to the book of Hosea. You know what I want? Hosea, you got it? Now, this is what it says about, uh, and you go to the book of Jeremiah 12 and 9. Okay? This is what it says about the children of Israel. This is a future prophecy. Okay? That the children of Israel was going to look like all different nations, all right? But what you also have to understand is that the people living in Puerto Rican that are look white, most likely are white. Right. Okay? When we speak about the true Puerto Ricans or the Ephraimites, where's the sign of Ephraim? Okay, it's right here. It's, it says Ephraim, then it says the Puerto Ricans. The people of Negro, Negro and Indian descent living in Puerto Rico today, those are the original Puerto Ricans. The Taino Indians or the Boricua Indians. Those are the original Ephraimites, the original Puerto Ricans, the Indians of that land, the dark people of that land. Now what happened, why was Puerto Rico named Puerto Rico? Who named it Puerto Rico? When you go back into history, the conquistadors, the Spaniards, which were white people that spoke Spanish, that came and took over that land, that island, and made them speak Puerto Rican, made them speak uh, Spanish rather, and named that land Puerto Rico. So a lot of the so-called Puerto Ricans that you see that look white, if their father and their father's father goes back to Spain, then they're Europeans. They're white people. Okay? What I'm saying, the ones that the ones that are, are Taino Indians are the real Ephraimites, the real Puerto Ricans. Huh? I don't see any Puerto Ricans. That's, that's a lot. That, let me explain it. First of all, I've been to Mexico, all right? I've been to Mexico, all right? And I've, and I've uh, spoke to the Mexicans. And the, the uh, Aztecs, the Incas, and so forth, the Mayans, they're still there. They're being called Mexicans, Peruvians, and so forth, okay? But that part is like very little. So, like, no, not much. Have you been to Mexico? Have you been to Mexico or Peru? I've been to Peru. You've been to Mexico? Okay, if you, go to, if you go to Mexico, when I went to Mexico, I'd like to give you, uh, give you an example. Every police officer was dark skinned, okay? Dark skin. Some of them had curly hair, some of them had almost straight to curly hair, okay? The, the majority of the people in Mexico City and the different parts of Mexico, Mexico that I went to, they were dark. And these were the descendants of the uh, Incas, the Mayans, and the, uh, the uh, Aztecs, and so forth, okay? Huh? Well, they're white people. They're white people. If they if, if if you see a, a Mexican or a Puerto Rican whose father, hold up, whose father goes back to Spain, then that's a white person. That's an Edomite. All right, and they're going to slave them. Okay. Yeah. Bring out the scripture. This is a scripture in the Bible, in the book of Isaiah. The Lord said that He would never destroy all the seed of Israel. Mm -hmm. right. This is Isaiah, the first chapter, the ninth verse. It said, "Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us." a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto the wall. Right, so that's, right, so that's saying that Israel, all Israel is back again. All Israel is still living. All Israel, and all Israel is going to grow into a great nation once again. Okay, I've been, I've been to Peru, I've been to Mexico, all right? I've been among the Puerto Ricans, the dark Puerto Ricans, those are the real Ephraimites, Issachar and so forth. The white ones, they're the devil, right? And they're going to slavery, okay? Because the most high, give me that angels. Let me go to one more scripture. Let me go, hold up. Let me go to one more scripture, okay? Then we're going to move on to something else. Give me the book of Amos. Okay, I'm going to go back to the question. Give me the book of Amos. See, what I'm trying to tell you, all right? You're saying that, let me, what I'm trying to tell you is that you're trying to say that most of them are white. No, what are you saying? I'm saying that some of them are white. 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 Some
way down the line. Was there that team that had your opinion? Now, okay, okay. Let me say this. Hold on, let me say this. I, what did I say earlier? I said if their father's line goes back to European influence, then they're Europeans. If it goes on their mother's side, then they're, like, for example, you take a Puerto Rican. Let's say their mother's white, their mother's white, and their father's uh, Indian. That makes them a real uh, Puerto Rican, a true Puerto Rican, or Ephraimite. Now, if their mother's Indian, and their father's white, and their father's line goes back to Europe or Spain, that makes them an Edomite, a white man, a Spaniard. Okay? That's all I have to say. Okay? I want that. I would, when you said before, when I was the last time, you know, you mentioned that um, the children of God, mm -hmm. the 12 tribes, mm -hmm. God got mad at them because they broke his law. That's right. So he put them under the, the, the um, he put them under the, the worst, like, the worst race that he called the white man. Mm -hmm. Now, Puerto Ricans, whether they be light skinned or, or black or Indian, are still being um, suppressed, and they're still being the, the white man's wrath, as you said, because of God. Not the black ones. So we, not the white ones. What I'm trying to say is that they're losing it in both aspects because they're also, they should be um, getting, like, they should be um, rewarded by God now. You're talking about the Israelites? No, no, no. They're still, you said that, that um, the Puerto Ricans of today, mm -hmm. doesn't even have to be Puerto Ricans, mm -hmm. right? And the Africans. You said they're not there for all of us. They're all stealing the wrath of the white man. You You're talking you? about the white Puerto Ricans. No, no, I'm talking about the Puerto Ricans. Okay, well that's one. You know, that's whole, that's my whole my whole point. Wait a minute before you go back. Right, because they're all they're all children of Israel. But you just said they're not. Well, I just said that. You're not even listening, man. I said all the children of Israel is catching hell. I was dealing with the so-called Negroes as one tribe. I said the Mexicans are catching hell. All right. The Puerto Ricans are catching hell. All right. That's why you have these different different groups among the Puerto Ricans that are fighting against the white man. Okay? That's why you have, that's why it's one of the biggest tourist spots, one of the biggest tourist spots in the world because you got rich white people going down there and the real Puerto Ricans are catching hell. Let me ask you a question. Why does the Puerto Ricans, all right, if they're not being oppressed in Puerto Rico, why are they coming up to America, coming up to New York, to California? Because they figure they can get a better life. And where are they being put? Right in the ghettos, okay? I know that for a fact, okay? But they, but they can have, those Puerto Ricans that are coming up here, right? They can have European influence in their body, I mean, in their blood, and they're also being oppressed. You don't know understand what I'm saying? Yeah, bring it up. I know what you're trying to say, man. You gotta understand something about the devil, the white man. You gotta understand something. Not only is he oppressing us, he's also oppressing his own people. You got a lot of white people, Europeans, that's catching hell in this society, too. Right let, me, right, 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 let me say this. Even if the European, you got homeless white people. If they're catching hell, that's their problem. We're not concerned about that. Because when this deal goes down, when this deal goes down, the white, all white people are going into slavery. Now, if they caught hell in this society, they're two times losers, all right? Now, if you got a, if you got a rich, listen now, listen, listen up. Now, if you got a, a rich white person that, that was rich in this society, listen up. If they were rich in this society, when, when this kingdom goes down, they go into slavery anyway. But they, but they enjoyed their south in this world. But in the world to come, they're not going to enjoy their south. But now, if you have a white person that caught hell all their life in this society, then they're two times two time losers. They're not going to get nothing in the next world. Okay? You got a scripture? Yeah. We're bringing of Solomon. It's showing you that lineage comes from the man. Wisdom of Solomon 7 and 2. And in my mother's womb was fashioned to be flesh in the time of ten months, being compacted in blood of the seed of man. Right. So we know who a person is according to their nationality based on their father. Okay. That's right. So, All right. Well, yeah. So, yeah. Hold, yeah. Hold up. The, the sister in the back. Yeah. Just according to the translation of the text, you and your brother and sister, and they are very. No, no, I'm, I'm, I happen to be so Haitian, of the tribe of Levi. I happen to be so called Haitian, okay? But let me, let me explain, hold up, wait a minute, let me explain why I'm like. Let me answer that question. Let me ask the question. Let me ask the question. Wait a minute, let me ask the question. Wait a minute, let me answer the question. Hold up, let me answer the question. Hold up, hold up. Let me answer the point why I'm like, okay? Let me answer the Hold up, hold up. Let me answer the point why I'm like, because my father's mother was a white woman, all right? 
Now my father's father, my father's father was was black, all right? He had a dark son. Okay? So when, I'm saying when you when you explain uh, Puerto Rican, and I'm asking you this in sincerity, uh, I think one of the reasons why some people got confused is they you, you had explained that the genealogy of Puerto Rican comes, you know, from a certain tribe. But then uh, the people are seeing them as white, and then when you use the word white, everybody was saying, well, aren't they white? If their father, if their father, if their father's white, if their father's white, then they're white. If you got a Puerto Rican who has a, a real Puerto Rican mother, an Indian Taino mother, and a European father, then he's a white man. He's a white man, okay? I'm gonna give you another example. Hold on, I'm gonna give you another example so we don't go around in circles. Bob Marley, what, what, is Bob, what was Bob Marley? Was he a black man or a white man? Wait a minute, I'm asking a question. What, Bob Marley, was he a black man or a white man? Although he looks like a black man, but by your thesis, he would be white. Right. Exactly, exactly. So Bob Marley, listen, Bob Marley is a white man, okay? Even though he has dark skin and woolly hair, he's a white man. Why? Because his father was a white man from England, all right? Now, now let, me, let, me, let me bring this out. Go to the book of Matthew, Matthew the 13th chapter, okay? Wait, wait, wait. Let me just ask you a question. I'm sorry, hold on, hold on. Let's just keep that. Go ahead. Go ahead. But it goes back to the father. It goes back to the father, okay? So That's why I wanted to bring out. I don't really understand so the color has nothing to do with it. In, in essence, in essence, now listen now, in essence, color really doesn't have anything to do with it, okay? It depends on where your father's from, okay? Huh? Because first of all, it's showing you the original color of the Jews. You got white people, hold on. You got white people, you got Europeans, you got Europeans going around saying that they're Jews. But I'm showing you, listen, 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 listen. I'm, showing, I'm showing you that, I'm showing you that the, the Israelites are dark people and they're many different colors, because they mix with different people. Give me the book of uh, Jeremiah 12 and 9. Jeremiah, Jeremiah. Let me say one thing, right? First of all, we didn't make color issues. You brothers made color issues. Listen, I'm going to show you how you made the issues. You brothers explain that you're African. Why? Because the Africans are black people. Not because your father was African, just because you associate them as them being dark people. Okay, the East Indians are dark people. You never classify yourselves as being East Indian. Okay, the, the original Chinese and Japanese are dark skinned people, but you never classify yourselves as being Japanese or Chinese. You classify yourself African under the assumption that they're black people, you're dark people, we're all the same people. So you the ones that made color no, issue. No, that's not true. So why do you classify yourselves as being Okay, let me ask you a question, brother. What, what nationality are you? That's not a nationality. That's not, no, that's not a nationality. What, what nation of people did you come at? What group of people did no, no, you come at? What you're asking is not nationality. What you're asking now is ancestry. Okay, well, I'll put it that way. Okay? So you want to play? You can't ask that? Okay, well, that's what we're trying to teach. We're trying to teach you your nationality. All right? Uh, have a white father. All right? Well, if he has a white father, listen. If he, if he has a white father, then he's a white man. I don't care how far he's a okay? And he's going to say, first of all, give me eight. Give me Jeremiah 12 and 9. Listen up, listen up. Jeremiah 12 and 9. Jeremiah 12 and 9. My heritage is unto me as a speckled bird. Right, a speckled bird meaning a bird of many colors, meaning through uh, 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 going with other nations, even up until now, you got black men that marry white women. Is that right? Correct. Right. You got white men that marry uh, white men that marry black women, and vice versa, versa. Okay. So through that, the babies are going to come out lighter skin, medium brown. Some of them are dark brown. Among so-called among some so-called black people, you have different shades of brown. Okay. Now this is. Let me finish. Let me finish the point. Read on. Read it again. My heritage is unto me as a speckled bird. Right, the Lord's heritage is the nation of Israel. He says, my heritage unto me is as a speckled bird, a bird of many colors, okay? Now I want you to go to Amos, the ninth wait, chapter. Wait, wait, let me ask one question. Yeah. You, you come to understand that the, the white man is a devil, he's deceptive mm -hmm. and all this stuff, right? Right. Okay, you understand that you told us that your mother was white, mm -hmm. right? How do we know that your father wasn't white and that you don't fall into the same category as what you told us? 
Well, let, well, let me say this. Well, let me say this. Whether, whether, whether I'm lying or telling the truth, if my father is actually white, then I'm going to slavery too. No, but the, but the point that I'm making is how we know that we choose not to be in the child is to pack all that and use it to do more accept. Well, that's, that's how you accept it, because not everybody's going to accept this. Not everybody's going to get this now. Not everybody's going to wake up to the fact that they're Hebrew. Give me somebody, give me uh, Romans 3 and 3. Give me Romans 3 and 3. I got it. Okay? Romans 3 and 3. Well, what if some did not believe? Right. If, if people don't believe this Bible, there's people that's going to say, well, look, I believe in the Quran, or I believe in democracy, or I believe in Africanism, okay, or the Egyptian Book of the Dead. You might believe in those things. Some of you might not believe in this Bible. Read that again. For what? If some did not believe. This is what the Bible says about the non-believers, the ones that don't believe it, whether they're Israelites or any other nation. Go ahead. Shall their unbelief make Shall their unbelief? Go ahead. Make the faith of the Father without effect. Right. Shall their un unbelief change the prophecies of God? No, they're not. Because this the world that we live in, right? The fact that you have uh, murders, you have earthquakes, you have famines, you have drugs, you have people with AIDS, that's all mentioned in the Bible. That's mentioned in the book of Matthew, the 12th chapter, Mark, the 13th chapter, Luke, uh, the 21st chapter, and in other books in the Old Testament. It tells you in the last days, these things that are happening right now, okay, are going to happen according to the Bible. This is how we know that the Bible is true, because the prophecies of the Bible, that's how we know that the Bible is true, because of the prophecies. Like for example, let me give you an example of a prophecy. Uh, Martin Luther King, what was he known for saying? As far as his, one of his famous speeches, he made a phrase. What was he known for saying? I suppose was before in Vietnam. <laughs> no, no. He, he, was, no he, was, he was known for making many speeches, but there was a phrase that he was known for. If someone says, I have a dream, I have a dream, who, who was the first man that really to really come out and say that, and it, and it rang throughout the whole planet Earth. And it's still so, uh, as far as tapes and records and so forth, that was Martin Luther King. He was the guy that went around saying, Malcolm X didn't say that, Mao Zedong didn't say that, Mahatma Gandhi didn't say that, he didn't say, I have a dream, I have a dream. Martin Luther King said that. Martin Luther King is mentioned in the Bible. Wasn't he a Baptist though? Yes, he was a Baptist, okay? But hold up. Well, he, yes, he was a Baptist, but it's saying that there was going to be a man that was going to go around saying, I have a dream, I have a dream. That's how we know he was a false prophet. Let's read. Jeremiah 23 and 25. I have heard the speech right here, okay? Read it, read it, brother. I have heard what the prophet said, that prophesied lies in my name, saying, I have dream, I have dream. Right. God said, I have heard what the prophets have said and pro that prophesied lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. We have Martin Luther King's uh, speech yeah, it's right here. It's in there. It's right here. It's in there. So. Okay? Should I read off? Yeah, read off. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesied lies? Right, because there were many people that followed, uh, followed his saints. That said, I have a dream. After uh, Martin Luther King said that. Okay, bring it up. Which is uh, Deuteronomy 13 and 5. And that prophet, or that dream or dreams, shall be put to death. And then did that happen to Martin Luther King? Now I'm going to read his actual speech, that, that part of his speech. It says right here, this is uh, Jeremiah 23 and 5, and this is his speech. It said, I have a dream that one day, that one day this nation will raise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. He said, I have a dream today, I have a dream, that one day little black boys and black girls, that dream didn't come to pass yet. Okay, there's still racism in America, it's getting worse. Okay, I will be able to join, will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls and walk together as sisters and brothers. Did that happen yet? Is that gonna happen? It says, I have a dream, I have a dream. Now this is a quote from Jeremiah 23, 25. I'm just bringing this out to show you that this is why we believe in the Bible, because of the prophecy, right? Now it says, Jeremiah 23, 25. I, I have heard what the prophets have said that prophesied lies in my, my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. Or I have a dream, I have a dream. Okay? Now I'm going to give you something else. 
The, the, fact that, the, fact that, hold up, the fact that the white man, so-called European man, went up in his face, that's found in the Bible too. That's found in the Bible also, okay? The nuclear destruction, all right? The nuclear devastra uh, devastation, World War III, is also found in the Bible. In the Bible, it mentions and speaks about World War I, World War II, and World War III. And it says that World War III is going to be a nuclear war, okay? That's all mentioned in the Bible. So, so whether you believe this or not, okay, all these prophecies are going to come to pass, okay? And if you're not one of the chosen of the Most High to receive this truth, you're going to die along with the unbelievers. Somebody else, give me a, give me a, uh, yeah, bring, bring it up, bring it up. This is uh, the 28th verse of the 23rd chapter of Jeremiah. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. Now, was Martin Luther King speaking the word of God faithfully? No, he was not. Because he was saying that black boys and white girls are going to hold hands. That never happened. And God never taught that in the Bible. And then another thing that he said, all I wanted to do was do the will of God. What is, what is to do the will of God? His word. Go ahead. Psalms 116 and 11. I said in my haste, all men are liars. What, Martin Luther King is a liar? I'm a liar. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to my opinion. Don't listen to this brother's opinion. That's why we're reading the Bible. That's why we're dealing out of the Bible. Go ahead. Isaiah 8 and 20. To the law and to the testimony, which is the Bible, if they speak not according to this word, Martin Luther King, Marcus Garvey, which they didn't speak according to this word, the Bible, if they speak not according to this word, the Bible, it is because there is no light in them. Right. Now let me just read this. This is in uh, 2 Ezra, the 15th chapter, in the third verse. This is for the unbelievers, all right? I'm just putting the vibration out for you unbelievers. It says, Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity, the unbelief, of them trouble thee that speak against thee. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Okay? Well, you bring this up. Yeah, bring it out. This is John 6, 64. Because Christ knew a lot of you wasn't going to believe before that earth was even created. Right? He said, but there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should, be, and who should betray him. So Christ already knew, man. So this ain't no mystery to us. We know two-thirds of our people are going to be destroyed, man. All right, two-thirds, right. Man. Let me bring out one more thing, then we can go, go on from there, okay? Because the, the lady in the back had a question. This is in uh, 2 Corinthians, uh, the fourth chapter, in the fourth verse. It says, let me start from the uh, third verse. But if our gospel be hid, okay, it is hid to them that are lost, okay? In whom the God of this world, okay, who controls this world? The so-called European man. Have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Okay? These, this, is, this is just going out to the ones that don't believe this, right? Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, the 19, it's we're in 1993, man. And if, if y'all don't know your nationality, you don't, don't know what's going on out there, then y'all totally destroyed. You, can, you might as well go home, bury, bury, go dig six feet under and dive in it. Because you don't see what's going on out there, then you're really in deep sleep. That's a curse, man. So. Don't you know what's going on out there? Uh, we drove in it, brother. For inquire, I pray thee. The Lord said inquire, man. You ain't, you ain't here in college. Like I said before, last time I was here. Okay, we know more books that's in this school than y'all know. We know what to go into your library. I mean, we don't even go here and know what books to pick up and show you that black men rule during the dark ages. We know these things. The Lord said, for inquire what? Inquire your past. And if you don't know your past, you ain't going to know your future. Go ahead. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age. Of the former age. What was going on during the past? You're talking about Puerto Rico. Let me tell you about the Spanish tribe, okay? During the 1700s, Ponce de Leon, the Spaniards and the conquistadors came over there and destroyed all the Spanish tribes and took them and put them in captivity. The British came and took the so-called Negroes, West Indian, and the Haitians and put them in captivity. And they also came over here and took the North American Indians there. They called it Port, uh, Rich Port, Port of Riches. Why? Because back then, this, all our, Spanish, our brothers, the Ephraimites, and all the other Spanish tribes were rich. We all had, we all had gold and money. We was living well. 
And we all felt as a nation, okay? Everybody out here destroyed us as a nation. Y'all don't see that, man? Y'all can't, I don't, I don't even think y'all watch the television news, man. Let's check out CNN. The, the storm the Lord did, with the snowstorm, over 200 people died. What do you think, it's just a, a crisis coming back for a rainbow coalition? Read. And prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. You have to prepare yourself. You know why we bring up this Bible? Why we bring up the word of the Lord? Because the, word, the wrath of the Lord is out here. You can mock and laugh, you can put up your middle finger, roll your eyes, stop your feet. You still ain't gonna stop the prophecy of this Bible, okay? Sure. And the Bible tells you in Ezekiel the 33rd chapter, the 30th verse, that people are, uh, people are gonna be in the corner talking about us. Man, let's go see what they got to say. Make mockery of us. You can't, God cannot be mocked. Yeah, bring that out, bring that out, right. so that they know when this, when this uh, destruction comes This ain't, on, this ain't no joke. They're gonna know that the prophecy's been among them. Bring that out. Ain't nothing funny here going on, read it. Ezekiel 33 and 30. Also, thou son of man, the children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls. Yeah, they're standing behind the walls in the corners talking about us. And look how they dress, look how they look. But oh, they know what they're talking about. Do you know what you're talking about? You understand here, everybody here laughing. You're supposed to be in college, you're supposed to be mature. I don't see no maturity going on here. This ain't no joke. We, ch we, we challenge the Muslims. Yeah, you can you kill your Muslim? Fine, present your facts. You say you're American? Present your facts. Why? Because we got our facts. We do, we paid our dues. We did our studies. We. You might not be saved, brother. Excuse me? You might not be saved. It may not be saved, brother, but I'm doing the work of the Lord. That's right. I'm doing, that's all it's all about. I'm doing, I'm doing the work. Right, let me say this. That's not us. Whether we're going to be saved, it's up to the Lord. Okay, that's right. He that does the work of the Lord, okay? Go to Matthew's uh, 721. All right? He that does the work of the Lord, he will be a white Huh? If he does the work, he does the work. If he does the work, if he does the work, if he follows totally the work of the Most High, if all nations follow the work of the Most High and and follow the Lord, they can be saved. An example, of what? An example of that. An example of that was Cornelius, right? If he's got white father, huh? I just told you. An example of that is Cornelius. Okay. But name me one. Name me one white man. Hold up. Name me one white man that followed did the work of the Lord. Okay? If they did the work of the Lord and, and followed this Bible, then they're going to be saved. Okay? But name me one white man that's doing the work of the Lord. No, no. Name me one white man that's doing it. If they're doing the total work of the Lord, then they're going to be saved. Okay? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Of course. Okay? Because all nations, all nations have a chance of, of salvation, just like Israel. Israel is the cho chosen nation of the Most High. Okay? All nations have a chance of salvation. That's found in Romans the 11th chapter, all right? It said that the other nations receive salvation. But how, how are they going to lose their salvation? Because they did the same thing that Israel did, okay? They became unbelievers. Now, that's why the so-called European man world is going down. Okay? That's why this man is going down. That's why, that's why AIDS is running rampant throughout America and around the world, among Europeans. And among our people, the unbelievers among our people, right? That's why there's chaos throughout the whole world, right? That's why there's drugs on every corner. I don't know about out here, but I know in New York City where I live, there's drugs on every corner, okay? That's why there's police brutality uh, every, every place in America. That's why you had the Rodney King verdict. You think there was one case of police brutality? It just happened to be that the guy had the, 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 the video. What about the guy, the Negroes that get beat that don't have video? And didn't and didn't didn't video those tapes or the, the the beads, okay? So you sleep you sleeping, man. I'm gonna tell you just like it is. You sleeping, man, okay? And you're gonna die in your unbelief according to the scriptures. Let me just bring this out. This is Proverbs 13 and 13. It says, "Whoso despises the word, this is the word, okay? Remember remember what we told you. Remember the scriptures that we brought you because you're gonna see us again and you're gonna remember what everything that was brought." Okay? It says, whoso despises the word shall be destroyed, okay? But he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded, okay? So all of you that despise the word, you can despise, you can despise the word. All of you so-called black people that want to sell drugs, go ahead and sell drugs, all right? We ain't worried about the ones that sell the drug that's doing wickedness. All we're worrying about is saving the righteous, the ones that want to get this word. The ones of you that don't want to get this word, okay, you, you can leave, you can sit there, you can do whatever you want. But when the time comes, you're going to be destroyed if you do not change, all right? 
Okay, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. And see, one thing I find about our people, man, they so busy trying to save the white man. That's you right. better try to save yourself, man. Okay? You better really try to save your damn self. The Bible tells you, man, it tells you seek your own salvation, brother. Okay? We seeking our own salvation, man. Okay? We ain't worried about the rest of our people that don't get this. Because we understand right, the word right, of the Lord. Right. The Lord tells you two-thirds of our people are going to be destroyed. Right. We're fishers, man. Right. They tell right. you that Jeremiah 16. We're fishing our people, man. Right. If we you understand right. we're not going to get everyone, man. Right. If you're not meant to get it, then... then you know, we ain't got nothing more to say. Let me just ask this question to the brother. I want to say yeah, what well, yeah, Let him say what you got to say. The reason, I can't, I can't speak for everybody else. Mm -hmm. but in, in my question, you have reference to uh, your uh, focus on color, right? Mm -hmm. It's not to try to say to anyone else. It's to get to the root of what your what uh, rationale is. Right? So I'm fishing just like you are. Okay. But this right. isn't our rationale, brother. This is the right. Bible. No, no, no. But what I'm saying, Lord, you, you, you're telling me things, right? And you've internalized something. So I'm trying to understand how you internal. Okay, but you have to open your mind, brother. That's what we ask. We're not telling you. What have you internalized, brother? Right. Like right. I said, what's right. your nationality? What people did you come out of? What's the name of your people? You don't I'm even listening. know who you are. Right. Where did you come from? Where did your forefathers come from? Right. What do you know? Right. Why, 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 why do you know? Okay. What you think the white man's gonna teach you? Okay. Look, we're gonna we're gonna go to the to the uh, the lady in the back there. She got a question. Okay. Paul and Barnabas waxed bold 
and said, It was necessary that the word of the Lord should first have been spoken to you. But seeing ye put it from you, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Can I say one thing on that? No, there, you got it one scripture? Oh, 46 and 47. Yes. Yeah. For so has the Lord commanded us, saying, I have sent thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. Now, that is the commandment of God. How can you refute that and say that the Gentiles are not so they cannot be saved? Okay. And then have a refute, how can you say that that's the commandment of God? Read on, read on, next verse. Read on. <laughs> and when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas. And they spelled them out of their coast. But they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Okay, that's it on that. Do you have any more scriptures? Um, I have one more. It's in Romans 3, 28. Okay, Romans 3, 28. Because mm -hmm. after you bring them out, then we're going to explain it. We're going to go back over it, okay? Romans 3, 28. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he a power of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Seeing it is one power which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith, do we then make void the law through faith? Lord forbid. Yea, we establish the law. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, and then in Mark 16, it says that the whole world can be saved, every nation, because every nation is sinful. In Acts, it says that it's all right for us. That means, that means ants can be saved too, little bugs too. Supposed to preach the gospel of bugs and ants, but the just say every creature. Okay, you want to go back over that again? Mark 16, it said every creature. Right. It's not a roach creature. So when I got, I got a lot of roaches in my house, so tonight when I go home, I preach to the to the roaches. They might they got a chance. Okay, now the point I'm making now everybody, hold up, everybody, well, hold up, everybody, everybody, let's, let's calm down, let's calm down for a minute. Okay, now first of all. I'm going to explain what it meant by the Gentiles, all right? The Gentiles were Israelites in the Gentile mind state. I'm going to explain that with the scriptures, okay? First of all, go to the book of uh, 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, the first verse. Then somebody else go to the book of Ephesians, the second chapter, the 11th verse. And I'm going to write these down, okay? Uh, you can read that. Hey, sister, I want, you want, excuse me, miss. We want you to write these scriptures down. Don't, 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 don't turn the attention away now. We won't give you. Yes. Right, so write the scriptures down. Okay. And, uh, and before you go to those scriptures, I want you to write this down too. And somebody go to Proverbs. Who's that? 4 and 7? Go to Proverbs 4 and 7. Somebody read that quick, Proverbs 4 and 7. Then go to 1 Corinthians and Ephesians. Proverbs 4 and 7. It says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Right, wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is found in this, in this book. Go ahead. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. You must get understanding of this book. You must, you must have an understanding of what you're reading. All right? So we're dealing with this word uh, Gentiles, all right? Mm -hmm. Now we're going to show you what it means by Gentiles, how Paul went to the Gentiles. Give me uh, 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, and the first verse. Okay. You got it? You got a feature. Go ahead. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles. Now, who are, who are Paul's brothers? Go to Romans 9 and 1. I'm going to show you who Paul's it. brothers were. Okay, it. bring it out. Bring it out. Romans 9 and 1. No, no, Romans, Romans 9 and 1. Romans 9 and 1. Yeah. Romans 9 and 1. I say the truth in Christ. Right, this is Paul, this is Paul speaking. Because his, his uh, divine inspiration came to the Holy Spirit by the Most High Christ, okay? He says, I say the truth in Christ. Go ahead. I lie not. Right, he's not lying. Go ahead. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Spirit. Right. Go ahead. That I have great heaven, heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. 
For I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ for my brethren. Now, my brother, my brother, we're going to find out who Paul's brothers are. Go ahead. My kinsmen. My kinsmen, relatives afar off. Go ahead. According to the flesh. According to the flesh. Go ahead. Who are Israelites. Who are Israelites. Now, go back and read Corinthians. Before I, hold up, hold up. Let me, let me read it again. Bring, bring it out. Now, concerning spiritual gift, brethren. Now, who was who Paul's brother? Read what you just read uh, in Romans 9. My brother. For I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ for my brethren. Who was Paul's brother? You know what? My kinsmen. His relative afar. Go ahead. According to the flesh. According to the flesh. Go Who ahead. are Israelites? Who are Israelites? Read on. To whom pertains the adoption? Now, what is the adoption, man, in the back? What is the adoption? What does the word adoption mean? Biblically? Yeah. What does adoption represent? It represents Christ dying on the cross. That's right. Okay? Go ahead. And the glory. What does the glory mean? That's talking about the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. Go ahead. And the covenant. Now, I said the covenants. The covenants. There were two covenants. Both covenants were given to the nation of Israel. All right? The first covenant was given to Israel through what medium? No, uh, mediator, Moses. The second covenant, or the second testament, the New Testament was given to Israel through what media? Mediator? Christ. Okay? Read on. Hold on. Read on. So we can, we can uh, get an understanding of this. Go ahead. And the giving of the Lord. Right. The giving of the Lord was, was to Israel. Go ahead. And the service of Most High. And the service of God, meaning the people that teach this Bible are the Israelites. Go ahead. And the promises. And the promises. The promises was given, uh, given to Abraham by the Most High concerning this particular nation. That particular nation was the nation of Israel. Read on. Whose are the fathers? Whose are the fathers? Go ahead. And who? As concerning the flesh. There goes flesh again. Go ahead. Christ came. Christ came. Christ came. You're not in the first verse, Mark 16, it says that um, every nation, okay, so it says creatures, it still says every nation shall be saved. And then in Acts 28, it still says yeah. that um, it's, you cannot call any man unclean. It doesn't say Gentiles. You said you bring up Gentiles and you people. The first two verses doesn't even mention Jews, Gentiles, and just every other nation. Okay, but well, we're going to go with Acts 2 and 5, okay? Now I was going to tell you who these nations that were throughout, throughout, throughout all these different uh, places on the planet Earth. Read, brother. Acts 2 and 5. Go ahead. And there, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews. Hold up. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews. Go ahead. Devout men. These devout men was of what nation? Out of every nation under heaven. They were Jews. These devout men were Jews. Go ahead. Of every nation. No, no, no. Read it again. Read, read, read that again. Go ahead. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews. And there were dwelling. Uh, there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, go ahead, devout men. Now who were the devout men? The Jews. It said there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men. Oh, so you're saying that every nation had Jews. I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm guess, I'm going to read it. It's gonna, I'm not going to say it. The Bible's going to say it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Out of every nation under heaven. Right. Out of every, oh, look, out of every nation under heaven. Okay? Read on. Read on. Go on, mention these nations. Go ahead. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Now, what did it mean by every man heard him speak in his own language? Because if a Jew was born in Africa, his parents would raise up, raise him up in Africa. He spoke the African language, but he was still a Jew. Okay. Now, why did they all come into Jerusalem? Listen, because it was the day of Pentecost. What is the day of Pentecost? You know what the day of Pentecost is? When does the day of Pentecost fall? That's why I went to Proverbs 4 and 7. Right. Get wisdom and above all I get and get understanding. Okay, I, still, I have I'm a question. question. In, in Genesis, oh, you're pardon me? I'm going to get to you in a minute, brother. In Genesis 10, 5, okay, you say that the Gentiles are the Israelites. But the Israelites were not created until after Abraham, right? In Genesis 10, 5, Abraham was not alive. And it says that the Gentiles were separated already from the Separated by the language. Right. So no, no, the Israelites weren't even existed at that okay, time. Okay, okay, let's, okay, 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 let, let me tell you, let me explain the word Gentile. Do you know what the word Gentile what means? You, the word Gentile, let's, let's deal with the root word Gentile. Let's deal with the word Gentile. What does the word Gentile mean? God chose people. Huh? God chose people. No, it does not. It's from the Hebrew, the Hebrew, 
Okay, that's why you have to know Hebrew and Greek. And from the Hebrew, Gawaiya, which means nations. That's all it means. Okay? So wait, excuse me, how can you say that there's a brethren, the Gentiles, if the nations, okay, if you're saying Gentile brethren, you said Jason, the Gentiles are all nations, so no matter who you're speaking to, no, they were Israelite. They were Israelite in, in a je Gentile-minded state. Okay. Yeah, let me say something. Let me say something. Let me say something. It's one of the major misconceptions on the Bible. Okay. One of the main questions we ask our people is, "What is your identity? What is your nationality?" Oh, now, wait a minute. I'm doing this to generalize everybody. Now, we know that the so-called right, black right. people in this country are the real Jews. Uh -huh. We know that the West Indians come out of the job of Benjamin. But whenever we go to a so-called black, you know. A black man of our people, or a West Indian of our people, we get up, I'm American, I'm African, I'm a, 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 a Jehovah Witness. They give us all these Gentile names. That's the same thing that was going on during the time when the Lord scattered us throughout the world. They was taking, listen, so they, listen, they was taking on the customs of the other nations. And not only was they taking on their customs, they was taking on their names. There's no such thing as black people, West Indian people, Jehovah Witness, Christian, Baptist. But these are the names that they're classifying themselves under. Everything but Israel. So what are they being classified as in the eyes of the Lord, in the eyes of us who know who we are? Gentiles. We're trying to bring you out of that Gentile state and bring you back into it. Let the brother continue with the scriptures. He's going to show you that's what the Bible is talking about. Right. I don't understand how you can say, you said when Paul said brethren, you said that you're speaking to, you said the Gentile brethren. Okay, you're, you're saying that's the business of the young, his, his brethren, which is Israelite. Mm -hmm. How can you say that when even before, there was a distinction before the church even existed in Genesis, that it said the Gentiles, which would have been other people at that point. Right, it's talking about nations. That's what it means. It's because because the Gent, you know, the big uh, misconception was the Jew, the tribe of Judah, which was living in Jerusalem, the other rest of the tribes, they fled into all these other countries. So when Christ came on the scene, when Christ came on the scene, all right, he, he came among his tribe, the tribe of Judah. And the Jews went around, the Jews went around saying that after Christ died and rose, that Christ only came for the Jews. But but Paul, listen, but Paul has came back and said, well, wait a minute. Christ didn't just come for the tribe of Judah. He came for the rest of the tribes. Even though they were living in Gentile areas and, and, and following Gentile uh, minded ideas, they were still Israelites. But he didn't say specifically by Gentile. So you can you can you see you can know you can get no bit out of shape off the word off the word Gentile. When Paul was speaking about the Gentiles, when Paul was speaking about the Gentiles, he was speaking about Israel like in a Gentile-minded state. Okay? Well, I don't see how, how you can say that. Okay, now let's see. Who, who is the Savior? Who is the Savior? Jesus. Okay, now, if, if anybody knows who's supposed to be saved, should, shouldn't the Savior know? Yeah. Okay, now, okay, let's go. Hold up, hold up. Let's go to the book of uh, uh, Matthew uh, 10, 5, and 6. I got it all right. Matthew 10, 5. He said at that point, he said, no, because I already have that written down. Matthew 10, 5. 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 He said, don't go into the, <laughs> the Gentiles. Go into the lost sheep of the tribe of Israel. So what did it change? When Paul came back in Romans the ninth, hold up. When Paul came back in Romans the ninth chapter, he, he, he told you that my brother, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertain the adoption, Christ dying on the cross, the glory, and the giving of the Lord. His brethren, his people, were and another thing, let me go to one more scripture. Hold up. Let me go to one more scripture. Let's go to the book of Revelation. You said that was during the time of Christ. Go to Revelation 11 and 1. A Revelation 11 and 1. Because in the, in the final stage, the real Gentiles, the white people in the other nations, they're going to be pushed out. The only people that's going to be in the temple is Israel. The only people that's going to be saved is Israel. You can't get around that. We're going into the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation. Read Revelation 11 and 1. And there was given me a read like unto a rod. And the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple right, of God. Right, that's symbolic talk for... The temple of God represent who? In Corinthians, the temple of God represent the, the body of Christ. The body of Christ is the nation of Israel. Okay? He's the chief cornerstone, and the rest of the stones represent Israel, right? So when the angel said, Rise and measure the temple, the temple was Israel. A, the, the temple of God is a people before it's a place. So when it said rise and measure the temple, meaning, listen, you're not, hold up, listen, listen, okay? So you can hear this thing out. Meaning to teach the people. Go ahead, read on. And the altar and them that worship therein. Now what does it mean in the altar? The altar, like I'm standing at an altar right now, a podium. 
the altar is the teachers and them that worship therein. Go ahead. But the court, which is without the temple. But the court, which is without the temple, outside of the temple, outside of Israel. Go ahead. Leave out. Leave out. Why? And measure it not. And measure it not. Don't teach them. They're not going to receive the kingdom of heaven. Go ahead. For it is given. For it is given. Unto the Gentiles. Unto the Gentiles. That, read that again. Read that part again, please. But the court which is without the temple. But the court which is without the temple. Leave out. Leave out. Those are the Gentiles. Go ahead. And measure it not. And measure it not. Don't, don't deal with them. Go ahead. For it is given unto the Gentiles. For it is given unto the Gentiles. Okay. Bring it Isaiah, on. Isaiah 61 and 6. But ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our power. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. Right, what does that mean? We shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. Meaning they're going to be our slaves, all right? And you go to the book of Isaiah 14. Go ahead. And in their glory, the Gentiles' glory, shall ye boast yourselves. I'm just wishing that this really doesn't make sense. Okay, in the verse that I said, um, okay. Acts 13, 46 to 47. Go to the book of Isaiah 14 and 1. It says the poem Barnabas, when they say, um, did their role, and they spoke the word of God and said to you, like, since you rejected it, who did they speak to the Israelites by saying they're speaking to the Israelites? Right, let's go to Isaiah 14. Let's go to Isaiah 14. The Gentiles are going into slavery. All white people are going into slavery. All Chinese, all Japanese, all East Indians. Everybody is not going to sign here of Indian and Negro descent. They're going into slavery, right? And let me say something. You know what you're going to find? You know when you're going to realize that? Now, you know when you're going to realize that? When you have chains and shackles put on your hands and your feet and you're put out in the field. That's when you're going to realize it. That's when it's going to become a reality to you. Okay? Read Isaiah 14. Read Isaiah 14. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. Right. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. Who is Jacob? Jacob is the father of the 12 tribes. Okay? Read on. Read on. And will yet choose Israel. Hold up. And will yet. Read it out. And will yet choose Israel. And will yet choose Israel. Because everybody's going around saying, we're going to be chosen. The Muslims are going to be chosen. God said, and will yet choose Israel. After all the talk and all the, all the uh, nonsense and confusion around the world and of religion, the Lord is going to yet choose Israel. Go ahead. And send them in their own land. Where is Israel's land? In over there in Jerusalem. Go ahead. And the strangers The shall strangers be. are what? Another name for other nations. Gentiles. The strangers. Go ahead. Shall be joined with them. You're going to be joined with us. Go ahead. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And you shall cleave to the house of Jacob. That's why you got a bunch of Europeans going right. around saying that they're right. Jews. Okay? That's why you got a bunch of Arabs going around saying that they're the people of God. Go ahead. Hold up, brother. Go ahead. Read on. And the people shall take them. And we're going to take you. We're going to take the other nations, including you. Go ahead. And bring them to their place. We're going to bring you to our place. Go ahead. And the house of Israel. And the house of Israel. Are you on this sign? No, I'm not. No, you're not. Okay, well, let's see where you're where you going to be. And the house of Israel. Go ahead. Shall possess. What does the word possess mean? We're going to own them. The house of Israel shall possess them. Go ahead. In the land of the Lord. In the land of the Lord. For servant. Wait a minute. What's a servant? What's a servant? It's that, the, it's that the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord. For what? For servants. Slaves. Go ahead. And handmaids. Those are women slaves. Go ahead. Read on. Read on. And they shall take them captive. And we're going to take the other nations captive. You can't get around this, okay? Billy, King, Billy Graham can't get around it. Uh, Rex Humbard can't get around it. The Pope can't get around it. You can't get around it. The Bible condemns you. You better face that. Go ahead. Whose captives they were. Whose captives we were. Was not we captives under the white man and all these different nations? Yes, we were. So now you're going to be captive. Now I want you to go to the book of, uh, okay, read on, read on. And they shall rule over their oppressors. The ones that oppressed us, which is the white man mainly, and the other nations, all right? It's getting to you. This word is getting to you, all right? Yeah. 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 All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. See, we wanted, let me say, we wanted to get that out of the way so we can go to the next question, all right? 
Okay, can everybody can give me a second, please? Everybody can give me a second. I know the debate is heated. I just want to make one comment. We would like this forum where you can kind of answer everybody's questions, so we okay. can't have one person monopolizing the time. There's a lot of people are leaving out of frustration. Okay, all right. And I understand you want to make the point. Okay, that's good. Try to get what to my brother right. 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 okay. What we're going to do, bring this one scripture right. out, then we're going to go to somebody else, right? right. If you want to talk to us, if you want to talk to us on the side afterwards, I'll be glad to talk to you in the scriptures, all right? But we want to give other people a chance to speak, okay? Because that, that's what the brother said. Listen up. That's not fair to other people. This is the last scripture. This is the conclusion of the matter. Okay? <laughs> this is the last scripture. <laughs> Revelations 13, 9 and 10. <laughs> if any man or any woman have an heir, let him or her hear. He that leadeth into captivity. Did not white people lead the black men in captivity and his women? Whether it was the so called Jews, the Italians, we have records on it. The uh, Spaniards, the Portuguese, the Greeks, all of them. Go ahead. He that leadeth into captivity. This is the Bible. You cannot get around it. He that leadeth a man into captivity. Go ahead. Shall. Future tense. Shall. Go into captivity. So all the other nations shall go into captivity. Okay? So with that, we're going to move on. If you want to speak, if you want to speak, if, uh, if you want to speak to us afterwards, you can speak to us on the side. You want to talk to us on the side. Okay, all right. Let's go to the next question, right? All right, all right. Let, let us have the last point. Can we move on to our brother here? Right, because we want to move on. If you want to speak to a man one-on-one, -on -one, you can do that. Okay? I have the last one. I can have my last one. Could you say last point, last one. Um, you said that the Gentiles are the children, which doesn't make sense. I mean, or only for us. Uh, you said the nation of Israel. It says, can you reject when Homer, can you reject which is the nation of Israel? My word, we're going into the Gentiles. It says that. Let me say one thing to you. What books, what books, let me ask you something. Now you, you came here with your scriptures and you put your scriptures to us like you think you're going to confound us and we're set up by the Most High Himself. What books were the Gentiles given? That's right. What books were the Gentiles given? Right. What laws were they given? What books was the Gentiles what given? Now you profess to know so much, you sitting there with your scriptures. Right. And you need no question. Let me just, the final, the final question is this. Let me say this to you. When you go to your dorm tonight, open the book of uh, Romans, the 11th chapter, and read the whole book. I'm still, I'm still, I'm still waiting for my answer. But you're going to lose your salvation. Right? I'm still, still waiting for my answer. What books were the Gentiles giving? Good, good boy. All right. Forget about it. Go ahead. Go ahead. See, uh, you uh, so-called black men and women, Puerto Ricans, everyone they go in the set, okay? But we're showing you, okay, you're the greatest nation on the planet Earth, okay? You're not a bunch of niggas, wetbacks, monkeys, spits. Uh, you're the greatest, greatest nation on the planet Earth. And 95% of the prophecy of this Bible has already occurred. We're here to wake you up, let you know what time it is. You know what I find out? I find out that you black people don't want to be uh, great. Don't, don't even inquire, don't even care that, uh, that your forefathers was great. You, you still want to be in this oppression. Let me, let me throw something else out. Listen, I'm speaking, all right? Like I'm speaking now. You have to have some respect. All right? Uh, um, oh, you have everybody, you always want to take the white men, the Chinese, and Japanese uh, along with you, and they don't even care a damn about you. They put you in this oppression, call you, they still call you names. Your question, brother. Um, wow. I have several questions, and hopefully I can decide to pick a couple. Um, is there any difference between the Jewish people and the Gentiles? Yes, there is. No, no, I don't have to. I don't, I'm not the absolute truth. The word, the Most High, is absolute. Right. He left His word. Okay. Okay. So the problem, oh, hold on, hold on. The yeah. problem that I have, I guess, with religious fanaticism, mm -hmm. is that I mean, people become so engrossed in quoting scriptures, quoting this and quoting that, and quoting, and even Muslims quoting the Quran and things of that nature, that they forget about the practical aspect of their religion. I mean, one thing that we have to realize is that yeah, everyone is going to go to hell and everyone. Right now, as African American black people, to try to do it or try it or whatever, to liberate our people and do what we can do right now. Because I mean, to me, it sounds like everyone has a mind complex. And my second part of my complex, the second part of my question is, the second part of my question is, what is your analysis on quote unquote secret societies and how do you feel about them? Okay, that's the first question. Those are some good questions, brother. Let me let me say this before you answer. We're not here, we're not here to, to have a, a to fight against y'all, to be against y'all. We're here to teach y'all, right? This is what we believe, right? Through the through the Bible and the, and the, uh, the word of the most high, 
the word of God, um, God said to go out and preach his word, all right? And to gather and elect a remnant, all right? There's going to be a certain number of people. That's found in um, Revelation, the seventh chapter, 144,000. There's going to be a certain number of people that God is choosing and building as his prophets, as his chosen people. Then the end is going to come. Okay, because when, when is it, the end of the world going to come according to the Bible? It said when this Bible, when this word is published throughout the whole planet Earth, then the, then the end of the world shall come. So and who's going to make down. you rich? And who's going to bring you, put you on top? God himself. So would you sit down with Barfi, Muhammad, and Minister Farrakhan and King Daniel? We have sat down with him. We have sat down with him. All right. Because the way it, we have a good understanding. No, I, I understand that. Uh -huh. And that's good that you bring that to light because the way it looks now is like, y'all don't give a damn about Muslims. Y'all don't give a damn about anybody else but people who are in the nation of Israel. I mean, that's what But I'm let me say this before I let you go up. Let me say this, brother. First of all, let's, let's deal with what you just said. First of all, Islam, Islam is a, a religion, a philosophy. All right, Islam just like hold up, just like Christianity is a religion or a philosophy. Just like uh, uh, the Moonies is a, is a philosophy. There's many different philosophies. Just like witch, witchcraft is a philosophy. You can be Chinese and be in a witchcraft. You can be Japanese, a uh, white man, black, uh, Afro American. Okay, what we're teaching, we're not teaching religion. We're teaching nationality because you mentioned uh, you mentioned uh, uh, Farrakhan so far. Farrakhan is a Hebrew Israelite. And he knows it, okay? Um, what's, what's this guy, uh, Iman Issa? He changed his name. He's a, he's, right, he's a Hebrew Israelite. The brothers that you see on the street uh, with the white garments selling the incense and uh, the jewelry and the books, they are Hebrew Israelites. That's what nation they are. And that's what we're trying to do. We're not teaching religion, we're teaching nationality. And God did not give man religion. He gave man laws, statutes, and commandments, and a guideline. This Bible. Okay. Uh, concerning, can I say one thing? Concerning Minister Farrakhan, his top ministers have come to our school. Many. They have asked on many occasions and asked us to break down certain scriptures so when they go in their debates. So if we are invalid, if we are invalid. Why did they come to our school and ask us about this? I cannot say that y'all are invalid. No, I'm just, I'm just posing that question to you. I know you didn't say that. I'm posing that question to you. Okay, I'm, we're trying to show you, what we're trying to show you, brothers, is that we got the truth. When it comes back to what it comes back to, we got the truth. See, but the Lord has given us the truth. You mentioned this point. You mentioned this point. You mentioned this point. I want to bring up touch. I want to touch on your first point. You asked me what we're supposed to be doing for our people right now. See, the main thing is, like, a lot of people, right, especially, like, a lot of your brothers and sisters out here, uh, you're in college now, you know, doing good, you're trying to make something in your life. What happens to a lot of so-called black people, Hispanic and West Indians, when they go to college and they get, start making better, what happens to our people, man, they forget about the poor of our people, man. They don't come back to Harlem, they don't come back to Brownsville, they don't come back to bed style and try to build it up. They start trying to uh, uh, become famous in this type of society. So, what we doing for our people is bringing the truth according to this Bible. Read that scripture in the book of the book. Read it. Right. My children, suffer patient, patiently the wrath that has come upon you. See, that's us, brother. But we the ones that's out there in Brownsville with bed stop down and out. We ain't make, we don't we don't give a damn about the white man's world, brother. I can't see myself being rich and famous and all my people starving and down on the streets of America. Right. I was in college too. I left that thing and go, man. Right. All that's these right. white men told me was right. how to read and how to write. That's it. Right. Because his science was a joke, his math was a joke, his history is a major joke, man. Right. And I, my spirit is what wasn't clicking with this man's goal, man. I so, think, I mean, I mean, you bring out scripture, brother. Because you asked me, what do we do for our people? You asked me, what are you doing? Most of the brothers and sisters right here can probably bear witness that they're not teaching history, they're not teaching science. But this is the medium, as, in most instances, for us to do things for our people. But brother, you're not really brothers doing anything. Brothers. You're not doing anything. Brother. Brother, 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 you just you love yourself. You're just a 50th generation. Brother, 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 this is sprout more rhetoric. Brother, brother, all you are is a 50th generation that's going to follow the same trend. Let me say this. Let me say this, brother. Hold on. Let me say this. Let me say this, brother. Let me say this, brother. Brother, hold up. I understand what you're trying to come from, right? I understand what you're trying to come from. point. Our job, we were set up to teach this word, okay? To teach our people that they were Hebrew Israelites. That's our job. And when this word goes out, 
and enough people, there's a certain number that's going to get it. When this certain number of people hear this word and accept this word, that's when God is going to intervene, right? This is a spiritual thing. Give me the book of Baruch, please. Give me Baruch. I'm going to let you get the scripture. Give me Baruch. So my brother, your purpose and then is not according to what he's saying in terms of building schools and all We want to do that too while we're waiting. Let me say this. We're not against that either, okay? While we're waiting for the most high to come back and deliver us in this spiritual rapture, okay, as the churches call it, all right, for lack of a, a better phrase or word, while we get together, we are going to build, if we have enough people to build a community, we would like to live in a community. If we have enough brothers and sisters, let's say a thousand brothers and sisters, and we pull our money together, we can open up our, our own community and open up stores and buy from ourselves and also teach Teach from this Bible. That's what happened 2,000 years ago when the Romans occupied Jerusalem. Christ, his father, his father was a businessman. His father was a carpenter. He didn't work for the white men. Uh, the disciples of Christ, they were fishermen, mostly. They were fishermen, and they went out and fished and made money on their own. And they spent and brought among their south. And all they did to the, uh, to the Roman that, that occupied them was pay taxes because they were more powerful. So right now, the, the main thing is getting this word. And if enough of us get this word, we can make, we can open up businesses among our spouse, all right? Or we don't have to buy from the white man and the Korean and the Chinese, all right? But the most important part is getting this word because we're coming to the end of the world, all right? That's why I wanted to have, if I, if I can, a little bit later on, I wanted to show this film with the so-called white scientists and scholars of this world, uh, world said about the world we live in today. They said by the year 2000 or before, there's supposed to be a nuclear uh, uh, World War III, nuclear destruction. And that's mentioned in the Bible too. This is what we're getting ready for, brother. We're supposed to sit on our hands and wait for them to No, I just told you we should open up there. Let me bring out the scripture. Read the scripture here for the Don't read the scripture. This is God's word. God's word. God's word. We're following the higher power. God's word must go out, brother. Okay? But we're reading out the Bible because it's documented, man. It's documented. Give me Jeremiah 17. Give me Jeremiah 17. Give me Jeremiah 17. Right, right, right. You better say something about our heart. You can't follow our own heart, brother. Right. You can't follow your own heart, man. A lot of people be emotional. If that's the case, you read the scripture. Let me read it. Jeremiah 17 and 9. It says, the heart is deceitful. So read it again. The heart is deceitful. Read it again, yeah. The heart is deceitful above all things. The Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things. How are you going to follow your heart, man? Yeah. 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 Finish me. Therefore, your heart is right? And desperately wicked. And desperately wicked, man. How are you going to follow your heart? Go back that to the book of religion. Go to the book of religion. This is not religion. Go to the book of religion. Your heart is in the My children. Suffer patiently the wrath that is come upon you. That's what we do, brother. We suffer patiently this wrath, man. We take it, brother. We don't. From the Lord. From the Lord. Read. For thine enemy have persecuted thee. We see it, man. We see it crystal clear. A lot of you brothers don't even know the history when we served slavery under the Chinese, man. Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, West Indian, Haitians. You don't know the history when we served captivity under the Japanese, man. Right. Under the East Indies. You don't know none of this history, man. Our enemies have persecuted. The Most High made 18 nations, including Israel. We served slavery under every one of them. 17 nations. Right. You don't know no history. Now, wait a minute, brother. Keep reading. Well, shortly, well, shortly, the Bible says, says, go ahead. Thou shalt see this destruction. We're going to see our enemy's destruction, brother. We're going to take what we want in that day, brother. We ain't going to vote for it. We ain't going to ask for it. We ain't going to save money up in the bank for it. We're going to take it. I said a white man got America, brother. And, and number, let me say this, make it crystal clear. We're going to take it back because it belongs to us anyway. It's a lost us anyway. Finish reading the end of that. They shall tread upon his neck. You're going to tread upon their neck. And what else? Read. My delicate one has gone rough way. That's, that's the women in Israel. That's the men in Israel. Go ahead. And we're taking away as a flock caught of the enemy. That's what happened to us, man. We was caught, man. A lot of you brothers have been brainwashed in these schools from kindergarten. They get us while we in kindergarten, man. I was 12 man. years of college, not even knowing your identity or nationality, man. This is a prestigious college right here, and we ask you, brother, a simple question. What is your nationality? What is your language? Who, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? And you don't even know none of these things, man. But and you know you're not being taught it. We come out here and try to teach it to you, and we still, we still get this slack. Let me say this here. Let me say this here to the brother, okay? All right? Let me say this to the brother. The reason, why is a white man ruling over us? Why does a so-called European man have rulership over the whole planet Earth? 
It's not because the so-called white man just decided to come out the caves of the Caucasus Mountains and just decided to, to, to rape, rob, and murder everybody, because they were at one point the lowest man on the planet Earth. While the, the so-called Europeans was in the caves of the Caucasus Mountains, there was great civilizations, all right? So how was a white man able to come out and assemble itself as a Philip of Macedonia, Alexander the Greek, and take over the whole world? Because it goes back to the spiritual, divine uh, purpose of God. The reason why, listen brother, the reason why the white man is ruling over us and we're on the bottom, because God made it that way. And now God is saying to listen to this word so he can raise you back up and the white man and the other nation are going to go back down. That's Let me right. read this one scripture. This is Zephaniah 2 and 1. Listen to this, brother. It says, gather yourself together. See, we're trying to gather together. We're not a religion, man. First of all, the word religion is from the Greek word, religio, to hold down, keep back, and restrain. The Baptist is a religion. Islam is a religion, all right? Uh, Methodist is a religion. Jehovah's Witness is a Seventh-day Adventist is a religion. We're not a religion. What are you? Uh, we're a group of people. We're a nation of Israelites. We are the chosen people. Right, time out. Before you said philosophy, right? Uh-huh. Philosophy is report. Huh? What's your point? Well, well philosophy and religion is the same thing. It's a, it's a point that came, it's something that came out of man's mind. We're not following man's mind. We're following the Bible, the Word of God. We're following the Bible, the Word of God. That's why we read up the Bible. Because we're following a higher power, and we're following his God. Let me bring the scripture up. There's no such nation as Islam. There's no document, there's no such nation as the nation of Islam. There's no document, there's no such people as the nation of Islam. There's no such people. No the group in which Minister Farrakhan has is the religion, what you're saying is you don't advocate religion, you advocate philosophy. No, 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 no. We advocate the Bible. The Bible. We teach the Bible. Where's the, where the nation of Islam located? Chicago is its national headquarters. No, I'm saying that from the ancient world, where did, where did the nation no, of Islam, talking, where did the nation, the nation of Islam, I'm right? no, I'm talking about a nation, when I mean nation, a, a group of people, a group of people, a national order. Brother, use the word nation mean? Nation means together, the gathering. No, it does not. Because wait a minute, hold on, wait, 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 wait a minute. Then, then that means the, rain, the rainbow coalition and nation. You got Chinese in the rainbow coalition. You got faggots, a homosexuals in the rainbow coalition. All right? Is that a nation? You got blacks and Mexicans and white people in the rainbow coalition. Is that a nation, brother? Is that a nation? You better look up the word nation. Nation is a group of people. Books, you know, but that's what you should do. You should read books. You should go to the library. But hold on. Let me read this scripture. Can everybody keep it down? Let me read this scripture, right? It says this. It says this. It says, gather, gather yourself together. Gather yourself together. Yeah. Gather together, old nation. Listen, listen now. Old nation. Now, is it talking about the Rainbow Coalition? Because the Rainbow Coalition is not a nation. Is it talking about the nation of Islam? No, it's not, because the nation of Islam is not a nation, all right? There's no such nation as a nation of Islam, all right? It says, gather yourself together, yea, gather together, old nation not desire, okay? That's talking about the nation of Israel. Before the decree break, bring forth, what is, it, what is the decree? Before the Most High brings the destruction on the earth and around the world. Before the day pass as a chaff, do you know what chaff is? When you burn wood and it floats away, that's chaff. Burn wood and burn stone. Before the, before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you. The fierce, fierce anger of the Lord is thermonuclear destruction. This uh, third world's war is getting ready to take place in America, all right? It says, before the day of, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. All right? It says, seek ye the Lord. It says, seek ye the Lord. How do you seek, seek the Lord? Through his guide book, his Bible. Okay? It says, seek ye the Lord, all ye meek. What does it mean, meek? The ones that, are, that have nothing. And that fits the so-called black people uh, and the people on the sign. That's why those Puerto Ricans live in Spanish Harlem, the Negroes, a couple of Negroes here and there, black, make it in society, okay? Let me finish reading. Seek ye the Lord, seek ye the Lord, ye meek of the people, which have brought his judgment. All right? Seek righteousness. Now, what does the word righteousness mean? 
I didn't bring my dictionary. I'll okay, the word righteous, the word righteousness, in essence, means to do the right thing. Now, what is the right thing? Should a man, let me give you an example. Should a man lay down with another man and have sex? Would that be considered right? No, it would not, because that, that causes diseases, right? That causes AIDS and uh, many other things. Doctors have to that. Righteousness is order and laws, all right? And that's something that, that you, you black people don't have. You have, no, you have no laws, you have no orders. The only orders that you know and laws that you know is the laws that the white man put on you. Okay, we're going to go to somebody else, all right? We're going to go to somebody else, all right? We're going to go to this brother here, okay? Let's go to, then we're going to go to him. Let's go to him. Okay, all right. Also, also the white man will go to slavery. There was a white man who followed the Bible to the team, but he, he saved the country. Uh, I mean, she has because um, it's, uh, she had mentioned before that it said in the Bible that anyone who is baptized and follows the word of God will be saved. Mm -hmm. So I want to know. Okay, that's an question. excellent question, brother. I like that question. You want to deal with that? Yes. Uh, yes. I got it. I got it. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Now, now, the question is yes, the white man can be saved. If he follows if he follows the right. Go ahead. According to the Bible, Ezekiel 33 and 15. It says, if the wicked, now, not only is the so-called white man known as Edom in the Bible, he's also known as the nation called the wicked. Because God tells you, if he's not the wicked, where, who is he? Who polluted the earth? Right, it tells you the so-called white man. That the, the, the borders of wickedness is Edom. Right. Okay. Okay. The That's the original name of the white man, the Edomites. Okay. That's your right. Now, they're also known as a nation called the wicked. Now, God said, concerning the wicked, this is what God said. If the wicked restore the pledge, give again that he had robbed, what did he rob? How did he get America? Rape, rob, and murder. How did he get Africa? Rape, rob, and murder. How did he get the whole world? Rape, rob, and murder. That's a known fact. Look, in, look in the history books, okay? What divide and conquer. All right, give again that he had robbed, walk in the statues of life. Now to answer your question, you were given the five books of Moses, the five books, the law. But you did not follow the law. You say faggots have rights, yet God says to put a faggot to death. That's what your people have said. That's God's so you have not followed the law. You have defiled the earth, so God said you will destroy those that have defiled the earth. Who have defiled the earth? The so-called white man. Chemicals and with all the pollution. Okay, I will continue. Walk in the statues of life without committing iniquity, without committing sin. Iniquity is sin. If the white man can do all of that, which he has not done, okay? He shall surely live. He shall not die. None of his sins that he hath committed, all the rape and robbery and murder, all that he hath committed, right, shall be mentioned unto him. God will not even mention that to him. Okay, okay? Now let me finish the scripture right. and you can come, okay? It says, he hath done that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. So God says if he restore the pledge, if he walk in the statutes, if he follows this Bible without committing iniquity, he shall surely live. But the so-called white man has not followed the Bible. He has not followed the law of the Bible. white man. White man meaning as in a total population of white man. What about a single individual who follows the word the laws of God? Yes, it is. See, when we went into captivity, okay, when, uh, when we broke the laws of the Lord, not everybody broke the laws. Okay, we fell as a nation. Right. You understand? And we're going to rise up as a nation. See, they're going to fall as a nation. All, all the rest are going to fall as a nation, and they're going to go into captivity as a nation. And we, have, as a people, are going to rise as a nation. You understand? We can prove it on this one also, right? The best thing that can happen to a white man, which you're talking about, brother, is that he'll be saved from the destruction and allowed to go into the kingdom as a slave. A lot of Europeans are going to be totally right. slaughtered right. in the streets of America. Right. Some of them are going to be saved and go up into their little kingdom and be a slave. You right. didn't right. 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 do that. You did it to us. All that. everything, cook, everything. Right. Let me, let me add to that, too. And, and, and you, Europe, the Europeans that live today, let's say in 1993, let's say you got a European that just did good. All right? Give me the book of Isaiah 1421. Can I read this out? You're gonna, you, the, the Europeans are going to pay for what their forefathers did. Just like we paid for what our forefathers, foreparents did in Egypt. That tells you that in Deuteronomy. It said, because of what our foreparents did in Egypt and breaking the law and sinning and building up a calf and all that, God said, your children are going to pay for it. So it's the same thing with the white man. Bring it out.
No, get, get Isaiah first. Get Isaiah. Isaiah 14, 21. Go ahead. For his love. Right. For his love. That means mass death. Go ahead. For his children. For his children. The white children. The children, like you got George Washington, he's considered the father of this country, right? So who is his children? His children are these Europeans that you see today. Okay? Alexander the Greek. Who is, who is Alexander the Greek's children? The Greeks that you see, to see today. Romans. Which was, which was uh, the name Rome came from Romans, all right? Is he going to pay for it? No, his children are going to pay for it, okay? We don't have For the iniquity of their fathers. Right, read it again. Prepare slaughter Go ahead. for his children. For his children. Go ahead. For the iniquity of their fathers. Right, for the iniquity of his fathers. Go ahead. That they do not rise. That they do not rise. Go ahead. Nor possess the land. They're not going to possess any land. Go ahead. Nor fill the face of the world with cities. Right, they're not going to do that anymore because they're going to pay for what their foreparents did. Okay? You pay for what your foreparents right. did. Okay? So it's not dealing with any one individual man. Okay? Right. Yeah. I want you to prove to me in God's word, because, you know, so called black people walking out saying how a white man is the devil. I want you to prove to me in his words. When it says actually like the white man is the devil. Okay, yeah, that's, that's very easy. You want to deal with that? Deal with that. Yeah. Go to the book of Revelation. I want you to write this down. Revelation, the second chapter, the ninth verse. Okay? Right. I want you to read that. Right. Bring out the picture. Okay? Read it. Read it. Revelation 2 and 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. Now, this is John on the Isle of Patmos. He's saying he knows our work, brother. Our tribulation and our poverty. Read. But thou art rich. Why are we rich? But this knowledge makes you rich. And you go and see the future things. Don't, don't you think it makes you feel good when you find out, brother, that finally you're going to get on, you're going to get ahead of that. And not just you, but all your people. Yeah. You want to see all of our, all the tribes come back together, brother, and take over this earth as men. Okay, that makes you feel rich. So the scripture says you're rich. We don't. And I know the blasphemy. The blasphemy is a wicked, filthy thing, man. It's a lie. Read. Of them. Which say they are Jews. Them which say they are Jews. Man, that's not talking about us, brother. You brothers is calling yourselves everything under the sun but Jews, man. The Lamely, the Nubian, I'm black, I'm Afro-American, I'm a womb man, I'm this, I'm that, I'm the other. You call yourselves everything else but the Jews, man. So who's doing that today, man? That's the right thing, brother. You want to say it. Read verse 2. Read verse 2. Read verse 3. And are not. And are not the Jews. Read. But are the synagogue of Satan. This is the type of verse. Wait a minute. Read. Let's get it out. Get the words out. Read none of those things which thou shalt suffer. See, because why? Because who's going over is the synagogue of Satan. Can everybody listen, please? Okay. Saying, fear none of those things that thou shalt suffer. All the hell, all the castration, even all the lies that you find out that you lies, man. Don't fear these things, you know what I'm saying? Read. Behold, the devil who? The devil who? The devil. The devil, who is he going to do us, man? Shall cast some of you into prison. Now, wait a minute. He's going to cast you into prison. Let me ask you, let me give you, you, you a quick synopsis, this, man. How is the white man going to lock any so called Negro in Puerto Rico the West being up in jail for rape, for robbery, for murder? First of all, he stole this land from a North American Indian. He raped over 77 million North American Indian women and black women during the slave trade and when he came to this country. So how are you going to lock you up for jail? Give me one more scripture. I thought finish it finish off. Finish it off. Yeah, finish reading. Finish reading. Behold, right. the devil shall cast some of you into prison. He's casting us into prison unrighteously, brother. All these crimes that he's charging these brothers with in jail, he done committed all these crimes, man. Right. Rape, robbery, murder, uh, blasphemy, all these things, man. Go ahead. That ye may be tried. That ye may be tried. And ye shall have tribulation ten days. A certain period of time, man. A lot of you brothers get locked up in jail for life, man. And you don't want to come out. Some of you brothers get locked up in jail for two, three years. You know, you're not in the jail. Right, check that out. Right, you know, right. Let me say something. That, that's why it is, that's why when you hear about people going to jail, it's mostly black people. And who, who are the judges and the bailiffs? Because I've been, I've been through the system, okay? Right. We're not just goody two shoes, Boy Scouts and all that. I've been, I've been, I've been through the joint too, all right? And I know how the system works, okay? I know many brothers go to jail, yeah. they don't do nothing. And white boys go before the court and they do all kinds of atrocities, all right? And they get left, uh, set off scot free. What happened to them uh, white cops that beat Rodney King? They had him on video, they beat that hell out of him, and they're trying to justify themselves. Yeah, bring that scripture. I, 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 before you go to the next scripture, um, you, if it's correct, you said that um, 
them that they say were true. Most white men don't say that you're um, No, they're talking, the first, the ninth verse is talking about, specifically talking about these well, bastards that call us out Jews. The tenth verse is talking about the rest of the Europeans. Yeah. Yeah. Let me say something to you, all right? Let me say something to you. You see these people right here? They're the head of your family. This is what you don't know. That's the so-called Jew, the so-called, the white man that's called himself a Jew is the head of your so-called white family. Yes, that's why you own every damn thing. Yes, yes, so yes, hold on, hold on, hold on, wait a minute. Just, just, let's go to the next point. Let's go to the next point. Let's move on. Hold on, hold on. This brother, this brother right here, yeah, I'm going to get you next, okay? I've been waiting for an hour and a half. I've been waiting for an hour and a half. You've been waiting for an hour and a half, so I'll get you next. Right under Christ. 
They're going to be in the top rulership position right under Christ. He's the one that betrayed him? No, not him. No. He was, he was, uh, when you read on in the Bible, there, there was one that replaced him, okay? That goes in the book of Acts, okay? Now let me finish reading, all right? Judging the 12 tribes of Israel. We're going to be judging the 12 tribes of Israel, all right? And everyone that has forsaken houses, or brother, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold. They're going to receive everything back because these disciples forsaken, uh, sacrificed everything to do the word of God. So they're going to get the, they're going to get the supreme uh, gift, which is rulership over the rest of uh, Israel and the world. It says, they shall inherit ever, everlasting life. They're going to live forever. But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. The people that think they're going to make it are not going to make it, and one, you know, vice versa. Okay? And, uh, that's, 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 Vietnamese. So if you check, if you, what you got to do is check your genealogy and 
check your lineage and see where your father's father come from. And if he's an actual Nigerian, then, then you are enemy to us. Okay? So that's, that you're saying that um, you separated blacks from... The right, because in the beginning there were all nations with dark nations, right? So if you're if you're an African, if you're a real African according to your father, then you're going to slavery too. Okay? All right. All right. Hold up, hold up. Wait, let me just show this. Let me just show this. Yeah, yeah. Everybody can not be a prophet. Right? Every man has his function in life. Right? This brother just said um, said earlier that uh, he would be probably the prophet out of uh, the education process to the top. There's some truth to that. Um, and in terms of history, in terms of art, and literature, that's true. But there's certain things that are absolute mathematics, science, laws that govern physical nature. Right? There's some usefulness in that. Right? But I have a great brother to speak to how, how we can uh, use that information for our advantage now as practical people, as this brother spoke, in terms of developing schools, in terms of uh, running a business. Because, you know, wait a minute, this isn't going to help you run a business, right? Counting will. Right. You're right. Let me say this, okay? And I had I already already had mentioned that. I said if there was enough of us together that knew that we were Hebrew Israelites, we can set up our own uh, communities and so forth. But let me say this in our school. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me say what I gotta say. Let me answer respond to your question. We do have lawyers, we do have lawyers in our school. We do have doctors in our school, we do have accountants in our school. We do have police officers in our school. Okay, so okay. you're not saying, so what you're not saying. Wait, no, 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 no,
What secret societies are you talking about? From Masons, Elixir, Messiah, The Masons, first of all, the Masons do not follow the Bible, right? Because they say there's a secret society. When you, when you come into the knowledge of the Bible, the Bible is not secret. It says, whatever thou hear in the darkness, speak on the, on the uh, top of the, uh, the mountain or the top of the roof. All right? So the Masons are not really following the whole Bible in its entirety. Okay? The shrine is understanding. Okay, they're, they're not following the Bible in its entirety, entirety because they're not going around teaching people that they need to live away. Okay? That's all I have to say on that. Okay? Um, with that, I want to show this. Uh, this uh, film, okay, what the scientists say about what we're, what we're hurrying towards, okay? And I'd like your attention. And this is only about five minutes long, okay? And this is what the European scientists said. I wanted to show it last week. Bleed to a terrible holocaust. I'm speaking to you today from the last battlefield on planet Earth. It's out here that the last stages of history as we know it will be decided. We're told not only in the Bible what will happen here, but when. The exact sequence of events that will occur here are given in prophecy. The prophet Zechariah tells us that the soldiers who fight here will have a most unusual way of dying. First of all, the flesh will be consumed off of their bones. The eyes consumed out of their sockets and the tongue consumed out of their mouth. But the strange thing is, he says that this will all occur before they can fall to the ground. There's nothing like that except nuclear war. events of enormous destructive and yet no one understood them in ancient times now technologically we see how they can happen i think one of the most amazing things is the book of revelation here we have a man that speaks of being transported in almost a divine time machine into the future from the first century to almost the end of the 20th century and he was told to write what he saw and heard and yet, how could a first century man describe what he saw in the very advanced scientific and technological age that we're in? He had to go back into his own times and take from the phenomena from which he was familiar and uh, bring it into bear and, and try to describe these things in terms of the phenomena of the first century. From the throne issued flashes of lightning and voices and peals of thunder and great hailstones heavy as a hundred tons dropped on men from heaven till men cursed God for the plague of the hail. The sky vanished and every mountain and island was removed from its place. no end to the arms race now in underway 
And so I think that time is very short. But unless something very drastic is done to improve the situation, we're headed toward nuclear war. that nuclear weapons will become available to an increasingly large number of nations and uh, I think before the end of the century probably even to some terrorist groups. Man is assisting in the process of his own destruction. It's 
It's almost as if we had an unconscious desire to see the biblical prophecies fulfilled. Consider the example of our vanishing ozone layer. It's a rather amazing thing. That ozone layer is the only thing that permits life to have come out from underwater in the course of evolution to exist out in the air. It's the only thing that permits the plants and the animals to live out on the surface of the earth. The reason is that the light of the sun contains short wavelength radiation that is incompatible with life and would kill all life if it were not screened out of the sunlight by that layer of ozone. That layer of ozone is fantastically delicate. If you were to bring it to what chemists call standard conditions, that is, zero degrees centigrade and one atmosphere pressure, that whole layer, that whole layer would be three millimeters thick, so something like an eighth of an inch thick. And yet that's all that lies between us and not being able to go on living at the surface of the earth. The prophecies of the end times speak of plagues and skin sores that correspond very closely with this condition. As the ozone layer begins to thin out, we can expect all kinds of dangerous developments, including a change in our weather and an increase in the incidence of skin cancer caused by sunburn. Context of that tape. That tape is taken out of context. 